A delightful day to everyone and welcome back to the Light Channel. So, it took me a while to bounce back to upload a content to our channel since we have a newborn baby. So, may mga adjustment talaga that we need to do together with my wife in doing some chores in taking care of our baby. And it's really a delight to see our newborn growing. So, technically, this post should be dedicated for our Mother's Day special. However, since we hurried to the hospital on the day that this content should be uploaded, na postponed, pero I do believe it's never too late to remind each one of us the importance of every mother, especially my wife, who just, who just became a mother recently. So, before I, before I go to our topic, how would how would you respond if someone in position or in authority pressures you to do to do something that you know which is not pleasing to God? That's where go that's what we're going to cover as we study the story of Shifra and Pua. So get your Bibles with you and let's study together. Our topic for today is about Shifra and Pua. And open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 1. So I won't be reading the whole details. I will just drive to the context. So uh, Exodus chapter 1 begins nung time na natapos na yung era ni Joseph, which was appointed by God to rescue the Egyptians from the famine that happened to their land. However, the next king or the next pharaoh in line was not knowledgeable or hindi niya alam yung mga yung history kung bakit may mga Israelites or Jews in their land. So since the Israelites were growing, uh, which is basically the promise of God to Abraham, si Pharaoh ngayon, which is the which is the pharaoh uh, being described in Exodus chapter one, was alarmed. Uh, we, regarding this growing population that the Israelites are undergoing. So, he devised a plan to, to be harsh towards these people, not knowing that these very people are the ones that help them to thrive, to help them to thrive as a nation. Kasi nga, nung time with Joseph, Joseph was, was important. In rescuing the the Egyptians from the famine that occurred seven years, and without Joseph's guidance, hindi magtatry ba mga Egyptians. And as I realize this, one of the important things that we need to remind ourselves every single day is that we need to know our history. We need to know and be educated about the things that happened. Of, of course, special, uh, regarding the scriptures and regarding to the history that we have as a nation. Because if we don't know uh, our past or our history, we will not be able to serve our generation properly. It's very important that, that um, if we want to live our life in our, uh, with our expression of faith towards God, we really need to drive ourselves to study and understand the Word of God itself. So, yun nga, no? That's the, that's the, <coughs> sorry, that's the background of Exodus chapter 1. So, Pharaoh was thinking of a way kung paano decrease yung population ng mga Israelites. So, what he think, he thought, what he thought is to 
kill every firstborn male babies of every Israelite household. So I'll be reading in verse 15 of Exodus chapter 1. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, which is specifically one of whom was named Shifra and the other Fuwa. When you, when you serve as midwife to, he, to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, it, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the male children live. Imagine this. They were pressured by the leader or the king of Egypt where they live to kill every first, uh, every, every baby boy, newborn babies of every Israelite household. However, Shifra and Puwa understood that that action is not pleasing to God. That killing a newborn child is also a form of murder. Imagine this. You are pressured to do something that is not pleasing to God. Yet, these midwives feared God more than the command of the Pharaoh. In a world that we have right now, there are a lot of things that we may shout out through our social media through our advocacies, etc. The world is somehow shifting its perspective to what is right that is being pointed by the scriptures. Other nations, for them, it's easy to, to abort a child. However, is it really the right decision to kill a baby at the womb or at the worst for a newborn child to be to to it uh, that his or her I mean particularly Dito uh, his lifespan be cut off because of a certain prejudice that the king wants to administer towards their nation, not understanding what the what the Israelites did for them, but having that kind of attention to 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 practice prejudice by eliminating a generation of innocent babies. I'm addressing this because when our firstborn came, when baby Ezra was born, I have witnessed how it's hard for a mother, for my wife to make that delivery be, be processed be successful in every way. From the weeks that we waited for our baby to develop to the point that that uh, we we goal to to make it uh, on the 40th, 40th week for our baby to be born, it takes a lot of responsibility and challenges. And I salute every mothers, every and even every fathers who supported their wife, to allow their child be born and not to put any shortcut just for the convenience of not embracing the responsibility of every parent should embrace when a newborn baby came into this world. What I'm trying to say is that cutting off a newborn newborn's life is not an option to escape a certain responsibility. If you are in that struggle, please don't do it. There are there are so many ways where you can place your child in safety. Kung hindi mo talaga kayang uh, panindigan yung responsibility, allow that child be born in this world and let other people care for the child so that they can flourish in this world. And and the midwives, Shifra and Puwa, understand this well, that a newborn's life is already precious to God. That's why they did not allow this 
to happen. Through their, through their ability and skill, they, they preserve certain life of Israelites. So the king of Egypt called the midwives in verse 18 and said to them, Why have you done this? And let the male children live. The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are vigorous, are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew strong. And because the midwives feared God, He gave them families. Imagine this. Because of the heroic response of these midwives, God was so pleased about what they did, especially for their veteran, which is in Kapwa, Israelites nila. They cared with their neighbors appropriately. Imagine, imagine also with me regarding this story. This happened before the Ten Commandments was even created by God. Yet these this midwives, Shifra and Pua, already understood that a life is an important matter to God. It's, a, it's, a, it's precious in the eyes of God. And that's why it's important that we care for each other. We care for the welfare of one another, especially in these trying times that we all face. It's not, um, I know there are a lot of issues that our nation is facing today. But the best thing to express our love for our neighbor is to care for them by, by being a blessing towards other people, by abiding to the law, of course, by respecting the authorities, by making ourselves Free from that virus by ensuring that we will not breach any social uh, health protocols. Tayo mismo magiging responsible tayo sa actions na ginagawa natin so that we will not be prone to be inflicted by this virus at makatulong tayo sa pagbaba ng, ng mga positive cases sa bansa natin. I know it's not easy lalo na ngayon sa panahon na napaka-init we are tempted to go maglakwacha and go somewhere. But, a simple sacrifice of ensuring that other people will be safe in our presence is already a godly act and a, and a way to bless our nation by ensuring ourselves not to be added to that positive, growing positive cases, by letting ourselves to be an impact na maging part tayo ng decreasing value ng, ng, ng mga taong may na-inflict ng virus, you and I na, ina na hinayaan natin yung sarili natin, be safe out of harm, na hindi natin nahayaan na yung pamilya natin is maging, maging prone to this virus, is a heroic act to help our nation go through this dilemma. And of course, Preserving life is how God wants us to do in this generation. And it's important that we value everyone's life. The love for God and love for our neighbor is an important, is an important law that we should be applied. First towards God, then towards our neighbor. And this is an important reminder as we also understand that the value of the Mother's Day is for our heroic mothers who gave their best to nurture and let us grow into this world. Of course, every father is part of it. And that's something that we should be embracing in this challenging situation. So that's for me today. So I would like to greet once more. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Uh, of course, for my loving wife uh, who just became a mother weeks ago. And for those upcoming parents, Happy Mother's Day to you, all of you. And for our parents, 
Happy Mother's Day to my mother, to, to Mommy Matea, and to everyone that uh, gave their best to grow their children properly into this world. So before I end, a huge shout out to Dan and Roselle, one of our good friends from church. We are so blessed that we are seeing your love story prospering and nakatuwa kami ni Dev to see you both um, kindling yung love nyo for one another. Hope to see you guys soon. And of course, um, kay Boy Bawang na nag-request din to shout, to give a huge shout out through our next vlog. And if you want to be shout out as well, uh, feel free to message uh, down below. I mean, down below. Feel free to message in the comment section or reach out through our to, through my Facebook page. Um, we will be glad to do a shout for you. Of course, um, we also want to uh, ask for your comments and suggestion. So please be feel free. So give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification button so that you will be notified for all our videos and future contents that we'll be posting here in the Black Channel. See you again for our next vlog.